Good evening. It's very nice to be back with you again. Many of the region's schools are unhappy with the allocation of funds they're to receive under tomorrow's schools. The money's fallen short of their expectations, with the bigger intermediate and secondary schools suffering the most. Cathy Graham reports. The South's two biggest schools, James Hargist and Logan Park, with more than 1,100 students each, have both been left with less money than they bargained for. The principal at James Hargist High in Invercargill says his school's significantly underfunded. For instance, it'll be $20,000 short for its heating bill. Students, he says, are the ones who'll suffer. But ministry officials say it's now up to schools how they spend their money, and this year's allocation is final. Logan Park, the biggest secondary in the region, has been allocated just on $750,000. Um, it wasn't as much as we expected to, um, <clears throat> as we wanted to get. It certainly wasn't as much as we thought we needed to, to run the school in 1990. Um, but we did expect that there would be a, a shortfall, and the shortfall, is, at a rough estimate, uh, is probably about $70,000. Like most schools, Logan Park will be looking to the community for the rest. Dunedin North Intermediate estimates it's 30% down on what it wanted to run the school. The principal says he's very disappointed and it will mean cuts in classroom facilities. Feelings of hopelessness and frustration have turned to tears of joy for some of Dunedin's long-term unemployed. A new initiative by the Employment Service is getting people who've been out of the workforce for months and sometimes years off the dole and back on the job. Alan Brady explains. Roy Watt was a machine operator for Print Pack when he was made redundant a year ago. After ten months on the dole, he'd begun to despair that he'd ever work again. I would go in there every week without fail and for a long time. No, there was too many going in there. Hundreds of people walking in there. And, of course, at my age, I thought, well... There's no future. And... Mike was a self-employed salesman before his business went sour and he was forced to register as unemployed. Both men now have work as a result of an all-out effort being made by a special employment service team in Dunedin. The Dunedin area has 8,000 unemployed. The employment service staff of 22 has no hope of providing a personal service for all of them but has found a way to help some. By targeting those people who have been unemployed for over 26 weeks, we feel we can make a real difference in their lives and, and really help them work out why they haven't got a job up to now and give them extra skills that may help them. Seminars, assistance with job applications and closer liaison with employers is helping to get Dunedin's long-term jobless back to work. They're absolutely ecstatic. You can see them come in the door when they come to tell us they've got a job. You don't need to know what they're going to say. Their faces tell it all. In the past two months, the personal touch has helped to find jobs for 130 people who've been out of work for months. At a time when the proportion of long-term unemployed is rising steadily, that's a success story unmatched anywhere else in the country. There's been a largely positive response from local Anglicans to the historic appointment of a woman as their new bishop. Full details of Dr Penny Jameson's appointment were released at Sunday services around Otago at Southland. John McDermott spoke to worshippers at two Dunedin parishes. Bishop Penelope's church home in the diocese will be St Paul's Cathedral, where she seems assured of a warm welcome. I think it's very good for the church and for the community. I think the majority of uh, churchgoers are women, and I think that now they've got somebody who can uh, speak to them. Well, since we're just going through school, it's nice to see that we might be able to get those positions in the future, and it's encouraging in that way. I was quite surprised it wasn't woman, but I'm pretty sure she'll do the job just as well as any male. The response will encourage the bishop-elect, who acknowledges there are still areas of the church where a woman would find it difficult. Ministry has to be effective. You can't. I, it would be very difficult for a woman to be um, a, a priest in an Orthodox country. It would be totally unworkable. Nobody would respond to it or, or do it. I, I've never wanted to go to a parish where people didn't want my ministry because I was a woman. And one of the things I needed to convince myself in Dunedin, that my ministry as a woman bishop was acceptable and, 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 and that in fact I could function on a broad range. Across the city at St Matthew's, the response was again positive, although with the odd reservation. Thank you very much indeed. The uh, only objection I heard was that the uh, she wouldn't be accepted on a Maori Marae. Well, that doesn't really matter very much down here, does it? With the office of bishop, I think it should be... Um, it should be, uh, I think, a, a, a male figure there. I think that people will be watching um, out 
and perhaps noticing every little thing that she does and will be ready to criticise but I don't know. I think it's good, I think it's really neat. And when the new bishop arrives down next year, there'll be at least one familiar face in the pews. I was in Crory West Parish where she's come from and uh, you know, I mean, she's just uh, really quite a delight and she's very much down to earth uh, uh, lady and um, I think she'll be a success. A recount for the Q Ward of the Invercargill District Council will probably be done this week. The recount's been ordered after a hearing in the Invercargill District Court. Rachel Dean, who's one vote behind Marjorie Jones after an earlier recount, was originally elected by three votes. This second recount will be carried out by a court registrar, who hopes to have it completed sometime this week. Art galleries need to guard their artistic freedom and integrity in an age when they must increasingly rely on commercial and corporate sponsorship to survive. That's the view of former Dunedin Art Gallery director Frank Dickinson, who retired on Friday after nearly 10 years in the job. Alan Brady again. Frank Dickinson's decade at the gallery began and ended with blockbuster touring exhibitions. Over 600 new exhibits were purchased, and after a good deal of intrigue and controversy, the gallery was recently taken over by the City Council. While he believes that's a move which will secure the gallery's future, Mr Dickinson says administrators will need to jealously guard their artistic independence and freedom. We don't like to be nudged and, and pushed and, and driven by finance. You won't find any, any professional uh, gallery person who, who likes that. So we have to watch the business of uh, uh, corporate sponsorship. While he's not prepared to talk publicly about the behind-the-scenes manoeuvres over the gallery's future, which at one stage saw the curator dismissed and reinstated and his own early retirement sought, Mr Dickinson's happy the issue's been satisfactorily resolved. There was a good deal of, of understanding shown on both sides and I think we've arrived at a very uh, equitable and civilised arrangement. And the standing of the Dunedin Gallery as it enters a new era? In one word, it's high. Two more of the region's buildings have received B classifications from the Historic Places Trust. They're Dunedin's old Southern Cross Hotel Wing and the Fairlight Station Homestead at Garston. And finally, some showbiz news. We understand congratulations are in order for Dunedin's most famous actor. Sam Neill has married, but that's about all we can tell you. His parents out there on the tidy prefer not to discuss their famous son's private life. We'll be back tomorrow. Good night.